an intro as to why we made this change. Um, first of all, the the way that we presented information in the previous version was not super specified to you. Um, we didn't have any sort of search functionality. There was no capability for us to incrementally make sure that you are being shown the most important information to you. Um, so we have incorporated um, some AI and machine learning in its very early days, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but at the end, I'll kind of talk about the future steps and what that means for us. So this is laying the foundation for us to be able to truly deliver a tailored experience for you where you don't have to do any work to be made aware of the things that are relevant and important to you. And if you just want to explore or if you're searching for something, we give you all of the tools that you need to simply do it in one place. Um, so one of the things that I will demo to you are announcements. Um, this was a big ask from a lot of our customers is, hey, I want you know, I have an announcement flow, but I want to make sure that people are aware that there is an announcement and see how many people have viewed the announcement and all of that. So I'll demo that in a second, but that's one of our, um, one of my most favorite features in this new experience is the ability to showcase important information via announcements to all of your employees in your company. Uh, another thing is access to files and documents. So um, some of you may have already taken advantage of the ability to upload files into a flow. For example, if you had like a company wiki or, you know, onboarding documents and you were just posting them attached to the flow post in the feed, and then people had to go in and find it there. That's, it's great that you have a place to house that information, but with this new experience, we actually make it so much more easier for people to search and access that information. And with our AI feature, people don't even have to go into those documents to understand what's in them. And I'll, again, I'll demo that um, in this webinar. So also another thing with files is if you work in Google Drive or you work in SharePoint um, or OneDrive, um, and you have to find yourself toggling back and forth between those experiences to find relevant documents that you need for posting an assembly or sharing with someone. And we brought that all into one place in this new experience. And um, just in general, like better organization of your most important pieces of assembly, most important files, most important flows, most important people. Um, we've added this collections feature that allow you to create folders essentially of all of the important things. So in our previous experience, it was just, you know, all of the flows in your navigation menu. Now it can be flows plus whatever else is important to you. So I'll demo collections. Um, so that's just kind of a, an overview of the functionality that we've added to this new experience that does not exist in the previous experience. So I'll start with the important section. So in the in the old experience, there was no like highlight, no, you know, we had notifications that existed in that bell icon, but there was no way to just surface that information to you. That was very like meticulous. You click that one thing, you go look at it. You click the other thing, you go look at it. We did have the unread section in the left, but it didn't give you a preview of that information. It didn't help you understand where you were mentioned in a post. It didn't really give you, you just had to click that and discover in that feed for yourself. Or like I mentioned, go to that individual notification and get routed to that specific thing. So what we've done with this important section is this is a collection of unread activity for flows that you are a viewer of, that you have access to view. Um, if you have a flow that it has it's running and you need to give an answer. We drop that into here as well, as well as this two flows to do up here. It tells you that you have um, ac actions to perform. Um, we have, you know, if you're mentioned in a reply, so like replies, um, similar like if on Instagram, for example, if you're on Instagram and you have various people replying to your post or commenting on your post in Instagram, you get those line items in there. Um, so we're, we're giving you that functionality as well. Um, we also have, if you're a manager, I don't have any of this to demo at this exact moment, but we do have a separate video for this, for you to check out. If you're a manager, you're also made aware in this important section of 
all of the activity of your direct report. So if your direct report posts in a flow, you get notified about it. If your direct report receives recognition, you get notified about it. If it's your direct report's birthday or anniversary, you have a special notification in your important section for that. So that's a really special feature for managers specifically. Um, so you'll see, I have a lot of unread activity in here. I'm gonna collapse it um, just to show you. So it's collapsed by default. So what we have under here is the feed. So this is exactly the same as when you click my feed in the previous experience. We have a chronological most recent activity. So this includes posts, this includes replies, this includes anything else. If there's a file that's been added or uploaded to um, your, you know, your assembly, you have awareness of this. So someone just added this file to our assembly. So I have awareness about it um, and I have access to it. Um, so it's just kind of a chronological timeline. Um, something that I will, well, I'll get to this in a second. So uh, just jumping back to the important section, this is again, the showcased relevant information to you that you have not viewed yet. So daily standup, I can see everybody's daily standups here. It's a solid preview of it. I can always click into the individual post, but for now I can just mark them as seen if I want to clear this, or I can mark the entire card as seen. Um, yeah. And then if I go to this feed, for example, and I, you know, I can go here, I can read them or I cannot, it will, uh, it should disappear from your important section, but I haven't record, I haven't seen all of the posts yet. Um, okay. So going to the feed, I'll just highlight a few more things about the feed. So this is the important section, as I mentioned, I can collapse it, I can clear it, I can mark all as red, I can do this and clear it all out. Um, but I'll leave this in here because I do wanna see what people are doing and catch up on it. So um, most recent activity, um, so most recently viewed, we have uh, the pages that you've last been to within assembly. So if I'm like, oh, I just went to, um, you know, I viewed flow templates most recently viewed, uh, it'll show up here. So it's kind of like a track record breadcrumbs for the pages that you view. And then most viewed is actually the pages that you, that you go to the most. Um, I'm an admin all the time because I'm always testing things and I'm manipulating their settings and all of that. I'm in launch announcements all the time. Um, so this is just in case you're, you know, this is how you work. We do offer you things that you've viewed the most. With collections, this might not be as relevant to you, but it is available to you. Um, one thing that I also uh, want to highlight, and this is getting ahead, but like we're also working on introducing a relevant sort. So it works with algorithm algorithms. It's like LinkedIn. It's like Instagram, it's like a lot of, you know, social media platforms where um, we use machine learning to prioritize content that's most important to you. Um, that's, as I mentioned at the start of this, where the AI functionality and the, the, the platform, the infrastructure of this whole experience is really important and where it pays off. Um, so most recent activity is, again, the things that are most relevant to you. And you can definitely narrow this down to specific things. And I'll get to that at the end with secondary filtering. So how to create a post. There's a few ways to do this. Um, with this new navigation that we have, um, so we, we created this navigation that is um, mirrors and expands upon the functionality of the previous navigation. I'll get into more details about the navigation specifically in a moment, but just to create a post, you can create a post from here, choose whatever flow you want, and then let's do give recognition. That's just one way to do it. Um, so I would do it this way for the sake of time. I won't demo this. Um, I can also click into any of the things that I have pinned to my nav and go and do it that way and start it this way. Um, another thing is I could go to my flows list here, click into any of these and start a post from here. Um, I can go into my collections. There's, there's quite a few ways to access your flows that you want to post in, but if you want to just create a post as a shortcut, 
um, you can go into here, or I would recommend from your flows or from your nav. Those are the three main ways to do it. Um, how to access rewards. So one thing that we are working on currently, just jumping ahead on you know, the future of this experience. So right now we have explore rewards here. You can access your rewards catalog from here and you can also access it from up here. So browse rewards functions the same as re explore rewards. What we're working on is we're actually going to be integrating rewards into this experience. It will be a separate filter that you can have here. Um, so you won't have to jump into in between experiences to uh, check out the catalog. So just for the sake of clicking it, we're here. This is the same experience that you had before. We just integrated it into our new experience so that you still have access to it, but we are actually redesigning and revamping. Um, and those rewards will actually be searchable um, from anywhere within this experience. You don't have to be within rewards to search for it. So that's coming. How to create a flow, Let me just move my thing. So uh, you can do it from here, create a new flow, or you can explore the templates up here. Um, you can search the templates. You can select, if you're not familiar with our templates, we have a bunch of different templates, hundreds of templates, different categories for your needs. Or if you want something more custom, you can click start from scratch. So you can go into here again, for the sake of time, I won't go end to end with the flow creation, but you start from scratch. You go in here, you create the flow, and then it will appear in your flows list. Now, one thing I will show, let me just go to my test flow, how to edit your flow. So I'll go into here. Um, the share button will be here and you can still edit who has access to the flow. And then you just go back. So um, once you create your flow, you're dropped into that experience to begin with. Um, but if you ever want to go back to it, you come to here and you click it and you access it from there. And you can also edit from here and view your flow insights. So same functionality, um, just showing you where that exists uh, in this new experience. Nothing's really changed with flow creation at the moment. We are going to be making some updates to flows and flow feeds, um, but that is not ready yet, but it's basically we'll be pulling those feeds into this experience and providing you all of that same functionality without you having to go back and forth. Okay, so um, just one more thing about flows. All of the flows that you can either post in or and or have access to view the posts, you'll see it in here. Um, you'll also see archive flows within here as well. Um, but this is actually something that we're in progress working on. So it's not fully developed yet. This will come with secondary filters, filters which I'll talk about in the end. Um, okay, so announcements. This is a really, really fun one. Um, we use this super heavily within our own organization. Um, something that I love to do announcements for is we have a flow called launch announcements. This is my favorite flow because this gets to showcase all of the cool things that our, our team has been working on. Um, so I had already made this an announcement, but I had viewed it already. So let me just go ahead and end the announcement. And I'll show you how to make an announcement here. So this is only available in the new experience. To create the announcement and to have it pinned to the top of the page is only available in the new experience. So it's exclusively here if you want to access it. So you have a flow, you pick the post, you post the post that you want to be an announcement. And if you want to make people aware of it, you post it. And there are some permissions tied around this. I won't get into it at the moment. We do have a help article that outlines the permissions, but you can select who has permission to make an announcement within your company. Um, but we can link any subsequent help articles to the help videos that we have for it. So I want to share this as an announcement. New feature launch nav experience. We released nav and now I'm demoing how to create an announcement for the webinar. You can choose the color. Um, you can do this on any post. It's not um, specific to announcements, but if you have a post and you're not looking for your employee base to interact with it, you can disable replies 
I'll show you how to do this in just a second and outside of this. But for now, for this post, I'll keep the replies. You can also disable reactions if you want. Um, if your assembly is connected to Slack, if you have the assembly app within Slack, um, we also automatically send each uh, person with view access a DM in Slack to make them aware of this announcement. But you can also configure whether you want to send an extra email or an extra mobile push notification to let people know that there's a new announcement for them to view. So it's on by default. I'm going to keep it on. But this will give an email and a push notification for anybody who has the mobile app that there's a new announcement for them to view and it will link them directly to it. So I've created the announcement. Okay, because I have, let me just clear my search. Okay, so all the new announcements will appear at the top of this page for anybody who has access to view the posts of this feed. So um, Connor also posted an announcement. Um, this was mine. So if I click this, I can go in and see the announcement, but as the person, so again, there are permissions tied to who can view the insights. So um, if you have permission to be the insight, so if you're the creator of the announcement, if you're an admin that has view access to the flow, or if you're a collaborator of the flow, you have access to view the insight. So I don't think that anyone will have seen this yet because I just posted it. Let me see if I can view Connor's announcements. Okay, so um, you can see who in your company has seen it. You can see the unique viewers. You can see how many times this person has viewed the announcement. Um, you can uh, do it by seen and unseen. So you're like, okay, these people did, but who didn't see the announcement? Now, if you click this, it will disappear from the top, um, but you always have access to this post within that feed. So you can always view the insights from here. You can end the announcement. You can edit it um, however you'd like. This will always be there. Um, we just clear up your space up top um, when when you've seen it, um, usually for the general viewers of this. So you see how they're gone now that I viewed it. Um, what else about announcements? Yeah, if you go into the flow feed as well, um, if I go to launch announcements here, you'll see that the post has the banner on it. So if I've been scrolling through this feed, um, you can see that all of these were made announcements. They'll stay announcements. You can end them if you want. Like I had shown you, you can end the announcement, but it disappears from everybody's uh, Discover page when they viewed it. So it's not really cluttering it, but it's nice to go back and see which ones were announcements. So you can end it, you can leave it. It's completely up to you. All right, so that's announcements. Um, I'm going to get into... Um, I'm going to get into the files and the app connections. I realized I missed one small detail that many of you might have already figured out, but we have these um, top level filters. So collections, which I'll explain in a moment. We have flows, your flows list. We have posts, which is just a narrowed down all the posts and replies that you have access to. So it's um, this is probably most akin to my feed because it's just the posts. All includes other things, like I said, important files, tasks that have been assigned to you, all of that. Posts is the narrow down posts of all of the most recent activity. Then we have files. We have your tasks. Um, so these are all the tasks that you've created and either assigned to yourself or assigned to other people. Um, they are listed here. And then we have people, um, which is just kind of a running list of people in your assembly. This will be replacing our people directory in the old experience. Um, we're making some enhancements to this as well. So um, this is just our first version of this list, but there's going to be um, a lot of cool enhancements coming up that I'll touch on at the end. So for the sake of files, um, two things with this. If you upload any files into assembly, you will see them in this. Uh, so I don't want most recently, we don't want most recent activity. Um, so you will see this in your uh, in your assembly list on your files if you've just simply attached the file to an assembly post. But what you can also do, as I mentioned, we have this really cool app connection tool 
I'm currently connected to my Google Drive and I can connect it to my OneDrive. So any file that or document or whatever that I've created in Google Drive that I have access to will get that I've created or that has been shared with me will get put into my assembly. And I'll show you why that's super cool in just a moment. But also the benefit of this is if I've created a file and I've shared it with everybody at my company, they don't have to connect their app to see that file in their assembly that actually automatically gets added into their assembly as well. So gone are the days where you have to try to go find that file and drive and then come back into assembly. You can do this all in one place. And you can smart search them as well using our Dora AI. So um, we have five apps available here. Um, this is just, these are the, the ones that are available to us at the moment. Google Drive, Box, Dropbox, SharePoint, and OneDrive. You can connect as many as you want. Um, you can connect one email to each of them. But if you happen to work in all five, you can connect them all here. So that's how you do it. Again, it's just this puzzle piece up here. And if you want to disconnect, you can just disconnect here and that will remove all of the files as well. So if you connect and you're like, shoot, I don't want to be connected anymore. And I don't want these files to be accessible anymore. You disconnect and they get removed. So files, I work super heavily in Google Docs. I write a lot of, and I work in Confluence as well. Um, we don't have a Confluence hookup yet, um, but I do a lot of things in Google Drive as well. So I work on the feature roadmap and resources. I you know, have a webinar outline that I use for this. Um, and then there are videos that we have for kickoffs for um, feature planning and discussion with engineering. Um, there are some things in here that don't directly involve me that are shared with everybody at the company. But this, I it would be very rare for people to just go look through this and scroll through this. I think our search functionality and um, the collections piece is really the way that you get this to focus. So for example, I wrote a help article about collections. And here it is right here. If I'm looking for this file and I want to add it to, you know, a demo, it's like, hey, what did I work on today? I worked on this help article. I can link to it directly from here. So I can pin it. Uh, I can add it to a collection, which, which I'll show you in a second, or I can just open it from here. So if I did this, it's right here. I didn't have to go find that in my Google Drive, which is great. Um, if I'm looking for a video uh, that we have, um, we have the sharing collections walkthrough. All of these things related to this feature that are in Google Drive, I have at the tip of my fingers here, which is really nice. Um, so let's say, actually, I'm going to kind of transition into collections. So this is where your files live. If you attach it into a flow, as an, um, a file upload there that also gets added here. So you do not have to connect an app to get this. Um, you can always just rely solely upon your uploading of those documents in assembly, but the app connection is really beneficial to just get access to these documents that live in the cloud so that you don't have to upload and or download and then upload to assembly and do version control and stuff like that. So super helpful. And again, I'm building up to this Dora functionality that really shows you the, the true power of this. So next we have, uh, we oh, one other thing, but yeah, let me go back to collections. So collections. So I've showed you where everything lives. I've showed you flows. I showed you posts, files, tasks, people, all of this. Now, you might see that I have these collections here already, the flows I care about. When we enabled this nav feature and created the collections, we also gave all of you just like a default pinned items collection with a help article and a help video on how to use the nav and how to use collections. You can delete this at any time. Um, you can unpin it at any time. This was just a, a way for us to provide helpful information to you. But we have, let me just move this. So, as I mentioned before, in the previous experience that you could create custom folders, but they were just flows. And that might be what you, I mean, that's what I use this collection for is just flows. But this is a, a list that I create, that I maintain, that flows that are most important to me. This is the exact functionality that we had in the, the old experience. Now, 
You might also see, as I mentioned, this pinned items, there is a link to a YouTube and there's a link to a help article that you could never put into your nav. So I'm just going to create another collection for this and I'll have it be, you know, important products, things, things I use for my day to day and I want to pin it. So important product things. I can always change the color of this too. You're not stuck with this color. Like say, I want to make it purple. So let's just use the files, for example, feature roadmap. We have the feature decision framework. Like these are all important documents to me. I want to add to a collection. Um, because I've already pinned this collection, I don't need to pin this item. So important product things, we add it here. And then it's right here. Say I also have um, help articles. This is a whole thing for me. So I want to add this to the collection. I want to add it to here. Um, let's say I also use a, a video, a walkthrough video that we had. So I search for a video. Um, okay, these are all the, the demo videos I've put together. So if I have any sort of walkthrough videos, let me make this more specific. Okay, so these are all the walkthroughs that I've done with the engineering team. I could put those into to a collection and I could easily um, make that accessible. And something that I'll get to just in a second is you can share these collections with people as well. So let's say um, replies. This is the new feature that we are working on. Pin this item, by the way. If you didn't already have the collection pinned, um, you can just choose from an existing pinned collection or create a new one. So again, this is really cool where you can just have these documents accessible to you right here and when you need them and they coexist really nicely next to your flows and your posts and all of that. So super accessible. Um, now, another feature that we have with collections is the ability to share them. So say I'm a, a manager of the product team and I want to share this collection with my team. I can easily do so by going in here and I can choose the department and I can have it be product management, have that be it. Um, they can view it or I can make them collaborators of it so that they can add important files to this as well. The collaborator role allows you to add or remove items from the collection. It allows you to um, change the order of the items in the collection. It allows you to change the share settings. So that's what this collaborator role is just for the sake of showing you. Um, I'll just make them viewer for the, for the sake of the demo. So now what people will see is anybody whose department is product management is going to see this collection in their collections list and they can pin this as well. But if, if they want to or not, that's completely up to them. Um, so they, if, if Katya wanted, if I wanted to share this with Katya and I shared this with her the next time she goes into her assembly, she'll see this collection as well. You can move it in whichever order you want. This, this page is completely unique to you. So your order is different than the other person's order. When it's shared with you, it will appear at the top of the list, but you can move it wherever you want. So I can unpin it, say, I don't want this to be, you know, in my nav. Um, that's fine. I still have access to it. So important product things. Um, what else? So yeah, sharing is a huge functionality. Something that we you can already accomplish with this is say you have new hires and you have a bunch of new hire documents. Say you have an onboarding video, you have forms that they need to sign, you have handbooks that you need them to read. You can put all of those items into a collection and share it with them when they start. Um, we're working on a start date criteria that would allow you to automate these things, but that's a little ways away from us um, at the moment, but you can still add the person's name into it. You can share it with a department. Um, it's, it's pretty customizable in that sense as well. So um, my recommendation would be just add the individual people or you know use a specific department or share the collection with everyone. Those are all really valuable. Um, 
one thing I'll also mention, say you have managers that are, oh, this is not the one I want to share. So important product thing. So say I wanted to share this. Let's not do this. I just want to share it with managers. Manager status is true. If you have like manager trainings that you need and you wanted to go to all of your managers in assembly, you can do it this way by putting manager trainings, manager updates, a post that's important for your managers to see. You can put all of that in the collection and share it with your managers and they will have immediate access to it as well. So it makes communication very easy with them and a single source of truth for all of these documents. So you don't have to email it. It's not something they have to go to try and find. It's right here in your assembly on the collections page. So pretty powerful feature that we're continuing to um, evolve and make even more um, useful to you. Okay, so I've mentioned it a few times about our Dora experience and how this ties into files. So if we go, you don't even need to be on the files tab, but just for the sake of refreshing this content for you again, these are all the files that I have access to. Um, they can be documents, spreadsheets, PowerPoints, PDFs, videos, um, you know, you name it. The Dora search, the Dora AI, the Ask Dora feature that we have is um, something that will currently scan and answer questions based on any documents, that, based on any files that you've added that are text-based. So uh, I mentioned the onboarding handbook for new hires or manager stuff. If you have all of those documents in your assembly and you have employees at your company that are curious about their PTO policy or their sick leave or, um, you know, any just general questions that kind of bogs down HR or managers, they can just go in here and ask themselves. So I'll demo this at the moment. What is my PTO policy? And I ask Dora. And then Dora tells me the answer right here. And then also cites the source or sources if there are multiple where this answer comes from. So it's it's amazing. Like if they have any questions, they don't even have to go and try to find the documents. Um, it's right here. So if I wanted to do what is my sick leave policy and ask Dora. Oh, sorry. So this is exactly it. This is the policy that you have, the employee can just go and ask this question. They can cite the documents um, that it came from. These might already be in the collection, but you know this is a really, really great feature for your employees to use to, to just allow them to help themselves and answer these questions. Um, it, it can be about any document. If I have a document about um, you know, what's the the outline what's the plan for the new replies feature that we're working on i could ask this in here i don't think i actually have a good document in here but if i were to upload into google drive the my outline and the release plan and all of that i could ask that question in here um so that's dora i do want to mention one thing for dora um is that it's free currently for all customers all customers have have access to dora um, but in the new year, as we continue to make it more powerful um, and customizable, this will actually be a, an additional charge for customers. So definitely get in there and play around with it. It's super useful and it's only going to get to be more powerful. Um, for example, kind of segueing into um, another upcoming feature. Um, we use pretty heavily this, um, uh, what do we call it? retrospective project retrospective so we have project retrospectives this feature is still in development so i'm not going to show it to you right now because I, it doesn't fully work but what this will do is instead of you having to go in and synthesize all of the feedback and try to summarize it and create action steps from it you can using our dora functionality click this you know, I, I won't get into this too much, but it's here. And then it basically asks you, what do you want to summarize? You know, if I want to summarize the carousel project, if I want to start summarize, you know, the replies project or any of the things that we've done retrospectives about, I can tell Dora 
and I can go in here and do it. So you don't have to go in and be like, okay, what's what went well for everybody? Dora will summarize that for you. So it will take all of the relevant answers that apply to that specific project and it will summarize the what went well for you and it will export that for you, which is amazing because what we used to do in the retrospect is we used to go through the list. Everybody said their piece. It was very redundant and boring and unproductive. And then what I started to do is I would download the file. I would export the data and put the data into chat GPT and say, summarize this. And then I would bring that back into here. So what Dora does is Dora is going to just summarize all of the results for you based on the parameters that you, that you put in here. So, um, if you run a survey, you know, a pulse check, you could say how, you know, what are people's feedback for improvement? What are our action items? What do people want to see? You could summarize that using Dora without you having to go in and do any of that on your own. So it's extremely powerful. Um, I'm very excited. This is we're we're actively developing this. So um, this is also part of the whole Dora experience and just one of many things to come with um, our AI functionality. So um, just really quickly, I want to leave time for questions. Just a couple other things that are coming up. I mentioned to you that we're going to be pulling rewards into here and making it more searchable and just a, a lot more seamless. So you don't have to go jump between, you know, two whole different pages. You can do it all from within here. Um, you probably have noticed as I've been demoing in here, we have these filters that we're working, we're testing right now. So we'll be releasing this soon. Um, you have posts and you could do from, I want to see all my own posts. You can have it all in here, posts and replies. Um, if I'm like, oh, I, I want to see, you know, files that are from me that I've uploaded or that I've created or I have access to, um, we'll just do this. But you could also say like, oh, what was all the files in this? Uh, do we have a wiki flow? No, no, we don't. Say I wanted to do all the files in Leo's upload flow, for example. I could see all the files that were in here. Um, and you can easily just go here and add these to a collection as well. So if you've already done the work to upload it into assembly, you can just filter by the flow in here and then do what you'd like with it. Um, so this is just, this is functionality that we had in the old experience as well uh, that existed in the right drawer. If you remember, that's where the filters lived. We're also working on pulling the functionality to download um, the export the file for the flows already. You can still do that in assembly right now. Um, just really quickly, I forgot to touch on that. So I'll show you um, my test flow. Again, I was I'm in the new experience. I've gone to my flow and I still have access to this here. So you can still do all of these things, but we're also working on, you know, with secondary filters, um, just basically giving you all the functionality and more um, that you had in the old experience all in one place. Um, the last thing that is really, really exciting, and we've gotten some good feedback from uh, our customers on this, is you may notice that if you view a post and you want to reply to it, we currently take you into this experience, which is fine. It works. Um, we haven't really seen a huge impact, a negative impact on that. But what we're actively working on now is when you reply to this post, it'll open up a drawer right here on the side and you can reply to it from there while keeping your context in assembly. And if there's multiple posts that you want to look at side by side, you can pop open multiple posts from different flows within these within these um, drawers. Uh, kind of like if you're, I guess the experience would look like if you're writing a Google, a, a mail and Gmail or Outlook and you have multiple like drafts next to each other, that's how it will behave. But you can have multiple posts open from different flows all at the same time. And you can reply to each of them. You can cross-reference them. Um, it'll just be a really clean way for you to reply to your flows. And um, yeah, so uh, that experience will be uh, super enhanced in the very near future. Um, so that's kind of it for upcoming features. And then um, really, really quickly, I know the holidays are coming up. If you um, wanted to do any like sort of holiday flows or contests or anything like that, favorite holiday tradition, I know we had some contests as well. Um, cookie decorating contest, decorate your desk contest, gingerbread house contest. Um, 
all of these are available for you to do um, to engage your employees. Um, and then you can reward them with points after the contest. And um, it's a really fun way to engage people. So just for your awareness, we have um, these. You can create your own as well. If you if none of these templates are what you want, you can modify these or you can start your own from scratch. So um, and when people the nice thing about this is when people let me just clear that this. Um, and when people do this in the important section, all of the different flows, you'll be able to see previews of those as you scale, as you scroll down from here. So it's really, really great for engagement. You can see everybody's cool pictures and all of that um, all in one place. So you don't have to toggle between the different flows to get a preview of that activity.